Well, good morning. It's, um, do you know, when the children go out, it's a bit like that mothers and fathers, you know this feeling. When it gets to that time on a night and they've gone to bed and you've put all the toys away and you sit down. It's a great feeling, isn't it? Yeah? Can you still remember it, some of you? That wonderful feeling when it's all peaceful and you pray as they go that it's going to stay like that for the rest of the night. Yeah? Um, Malcolm, thank you very much for your prayers there. You must have been reading my script because I think uh, you sort of did half of my script. So, But that's always a confirmation, isn't it? When somebody does something and uses the scriptures that you're going to use, I think it just reinforces to you what's happening. Um, if you were to write a job description of a mother, what sort of things might you have in it? Eh? I've got some suggestions here that uh, have been given to me, and uh, I wonder if you can relate to them. Just so if, if it's something that you relate to, just nod, okay? So, first of all, it's a permanent job. Yeah, would you agree with that? The successful applicant must be prepared to work hard. Is that right? The workplace is often a challenging and chaotic environment. Yeah? Applicants must possess excellent communication and organization skills. Yeah? And be willing to work variable hours, which include evenings and weekends and frequent 24-hour shifts. Yeah? Extensive chauffeuring duties also required, but your travel expenses will not usually be reimbursed. Some overnight travel will be required, including trips to camping sites on rainy weekends and countless sports tournaments in faraway places. Yeah? Must be willing to be hated, at least temporarily, until someone needs five pound. <laughs> yeah? That's a good one, that isn't it? I like that one. Must be willing to bite tongue repeatedly. Must possess the physical stamina of a pack mule and be able to go from zero to 60 miles per hour in three seconds flat in case this time the screams from the garden are genuine <laughs> and not just someone crying wolf or playing. Must be willing to face stimulating technical challenges such as, such as small gadget repair, mysteriously sluggish toilets and stuck zips. Must screen phone calls, maintain calendars and coordinate production of multiple home, homework projects. Must have ability to plan and organize social gatherings for clients of all ages and mental outlooks. Must be willing to be indispensable one minute and an embarrassment the next. <laughs> Health and safety. Must be able to handle the assembly and product safety testing of hundreds of toys and battery-operated devices. Attitude and demeanor. Must always hope for the best but be prepared for the worst. <laughs> Must assume final, a complete accountability for the quality of the end product. Responsibilities also include floor maintenance, laundry, janitorial work throughout the place of employment. Promotional prospects. None. <laughs> Your job is to remain in the same position for years, without complaining, constantly retraining and updating your skills so that those in your charge can ultimately surpass you. Previous experience, non-required because no other form of employment is totally relevant. But on-the-job training, in-service training is offered on a continually exhausting basis. Wages and bonuses, none. Job satisfaction is what you'll hopefully receive. 
outlays. You pay every bill for your child at least until they turn 18 because of the assumption that college will help them become financially independent. Well, that's not even true now, is it? Because 18 means it just gets more expensive. When you die, you give them whatever's left. <laughs> Benefits. While no health or dental insurance, no pension, no tuition reimbursement, no paid holidays, and no bonuses are offered, this job supplies limitless opportunities for free hugs for life, if you play your cards right. <laughs> Tenure for the rest of your life. Some of those are obviously tongue-in-cheek suggestions, but I think we can relate to almost all of them, can't we? If we've had a family and brought up children or been involved with families that have been bringing up children. The word mother appears 42 times in the New Testament. It would be good to look at all of them, but we haven't really got that time. But I just want to look at some of them. And I want to look at particularly three portions of Scripture relating to Mary, the mother of Jesus. Now, we've already had one of them, but we're going to come to that in a minute. But first of all, let's look at Luke chapter 1. This is the familiar story of the introduction of Jesus. In the first, sorry, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come to you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be will be born, will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. For no, for no word from God will ever fail. And Mary's response to this was, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Now this is interesting isn't it? because here we see Mary being chosen to be mother of the Son of God. Mary chosen to be the mother of Jesus Christ. And Mary, you know, we don't, uh, we don't, uh, uh, we don't put the level that they do in the Catholic Church, but we should still look at her and just see she was a very blessed woman chosen by God to fulfill this role of the mother of Jesus. And Mary's response was lovely, wasn't it? She didn't panic or she didn't appear to in the scripture. She just said, I am the Lord's servant. In other words, I'll just do whatever God wants us to do. And you know, mothers here and parents, when we have a child, we just fulfill in what God wants us. It's God's purpose God brings it about, and we don't have a lot of choice in the matter. Once it happens, it's there, and we're chosen to bring up that particular child. Today, mothers are blessed by God with children. The task may not be easy, but the Scripture tell us that our children are a blessing. Now, I know as a parent, at times I've always there's times when we think, I don't feel very blessed at this particular moment when something's going wrong. But God reminds us that our children are a blessing to us. What sort of mother was Mary, do you think? 
We don't see a lot of evidence in the Bible of what sort of mother she was. But let's look at the second bit of Scripture. This is one of the only stories in the Bible that talks about what Jesus was like as a child. And it's found in Luke chapter 2. It says, Every year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it, thinking he was in their company. They traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple court, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. And Jesus' reply was, Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? Did they not understand what he was saying to them? Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature, in favor with God and man. When, uh, when we, uh, Lydia, our second youngest grandchild, was small, uh, I used to have the job of taking her to school on a morning. And in Lumley, uh, it was, we lived at one end of the village and the school was in the middle of the village. And uh, we'd toddle off and uh, Lydia used to like to chat and she'd tell me all sorts of things. But as she got a bit older, she decided it would be good fun if when we were walking down the street, she would go along a path and down the back lane and I would meet her at the other end. It was a big adventure for her. And uh, we used to do that. Except one day, I'm walking down and she goes off down the street, see your granddad at the other end. And when I got to the other end, she wasn't there. I was like, oh no, what do I do? How do I tell Rachel that I've lost her child on the way to school? What am I going to say? How am I going to explain that? How will church react when I tell them I was taking the grandchild to school and lost her? on the way. So I thought, well, she was going pretty quickly, so I raced on ahead, and there she was, nearly at school. When I got there, I said, Lydia, where have you been? You were supposed to wait at the end. She says, Grandad, I don't know what you're panicking about. I've done this every day for the last year. I know how to get to school. It doesn't need you to be there with me. <laughs> I was like, oh dear. And of course, being a grandparent, I get reminded on a regular basis of the time I lost Lydia on the way to school, as well as the time I threw Esther into the air when we were at the swimming pool and nearly banged her head off the ceiling. I always get reminded about that as well. But can you imagine the anxiety that Mary had in looking for Jesus? Okay, he was 12, but let's face it, he was in a strange place. They were in Jerusalem in the big city with crowds of people they didn't know there. If you've ever been to Jerusalem, it's not a place you want to get lost in with little side streets and, and uh, you know, lots of people from all different nationalities there. Um, but to lose them for three days, crikey. How many of us were you panicking after three minutes or three hours, never mind three days? And then we hear those words, which are just lovely words, aren't they? But Mary, his mother, treasured all these things in her heart. Now, would you be treasuring it? Let's be honest, mothers. How many of you here would treasure that? Would you just go, I just don't want that to happen again, hey? Yes. Treasured it. She treasured it. And, but I think what she treasured really was more, not the bit that she'd lost him, but the fact that the hair was, there was this Jesus who had been promised was going to be somebody special, uh, was there teaching in the temple. He was talking to people. 
12 year old there he was doing something special I just wonder how she felt about it how she just coped with that and it just says there she treasured those things and Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and favour with God and man do you think she was cool Did, would you have reacted like that I'm not sure I would have I think I'd have been in panic mode you know like the travel they did and had to come back again as well all that journey and stuff that I had to do and there's another scripture which I'm not going to read out but I'm going to tell you the story Jesus is teaching in a room there and the disciples come to Jesus and say your mother and some of your brothers and sisters are outside and he and Jesus just says oh take no notice of them um, I'm busy doing God's work now if you were a mother and you'd gone to the door and your son was there how would you have felt about that? There's not a lot said about that particular incident. But it must have felt quite harsh to be locked out by your son who felt it was more important to be teaching God's word than to actually go and let your mother, let the mother and the family in. That was a bit of an incidental of a scripture there. And then we get to the scripture that um, was read out for us, which by Malcolm read out. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Now, it sounds a bit strange, that, doesn't it? Because by that time, we're told Jesus had brothers, and uh, you'd think, well, there wasn't just other people to look after. Uh, there wasn't just John to look after, uh, to look after Mary. But it just illustrates Jesus' relationship with his mother, that he saw the need that was there. Some writers say it was just John, because when the scripture says, uh, when the disciple whom Jesus loved was standing there, it was actually John, the author, who wrote that word. So why wouldn't he write, well, I was the one that Jesus loved, you know, uh, in, in the scripture there. But it just points to us that relationship that Jesus had with his mother and the care that Jesus took for his mother. As Mary and Joseph, but perhaps then Jesus remembered, sorry, let's start again. Perhaps at that occasion, Mary remembered the occasion when Jesus was taken to the temple as a small baby. And uh, Jesus and Mary and Joseph brought the newborn son Jesus to the temple for dedication. And a godly man named Simeon saw Jesus, took him in his arms, and blessed the baby Jesus. Yet he also said to Mary, Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also. Mary experienced this through the ministry of her son. So Mary had all these things going on in her head and and she must have been thinking, well, you know, these promises have been made, this, uh, these words have been spoken over Jesus. What's that going to look like? And then she saw what it ended up looking like completely when she stood at the foot of the cross and saw Jesus being crucified. As we know, today is Mother's Day. And um, the role of Mary wasn't easy, was it? Right from the start. It was hindered with problems and concerns and worries. And yet Mary, we see, stuck with that role and was faithful right to the point where Jesus was crucified. And I don't think the role for mothers is easy today, as we saw from that list of uh, job description. It isn't the easiest role, is it? Do you think? Do you think it's an easy role being a mother? No, it's a hard role that way. Mothers are charged with. And sometimes parents who take on, fathers who take on the role of being uh, a stay-at-home dad fulfill some of that role as mothers as well. I was thinking about this and thought, uh, I've been doing my family tree and I discovered that my grandfather was twice declared dead uh, in, during World War I. And I tried to think, well, what my grandmother must have felt when she heard that uh, he, 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 he'd been proclaimed dead. And how she must have felt when 
ultimately he came back as, uh, from being a prisoner of war. And I was thinking about, and, and, and we, Malcolm hinted on this as well, about what it must be like for those mothers who are taking their children to safety from Ukraine and leaving their husbands behind. One, they don't know if they're ever going to get back again. One, they don't, then they don't know if their, their husbands are going to be killed. One, they didn't, then they didn't know where they were going to go to, where they were going to be staying. Would they get enough food for the journey? Okay, there's these kind people in other countries offering us a house to live in, but not all those places might be nice places to live. Even, we don't know, do we? And they don't know. And we've got to have so much respect for them wanting to protect their children and care for them during this difficult time. And so we're going to pray for them. We have already prayed for them, but we're going to pray for them again. One of the things that was really good when, when I worked for Safe Families for Children, those of you who don't know about Safe Families, it's a charity. Many of you got involved in it, and are, are involved in it, um, was we just got parents to get alongside uh, we, we got volunteers to get alongside parents who were struggling, just who needed somebody to say, you're doing a good job, or how you do this, and can I help you? And uh, many of you got involved and have got stories that you could tell about how that made a difference. Um, but sometimes some mothers just need a bit of help, just need the role of uh, somebody to get alongside. Some people have no parents who can help them, some mothers... Uh, and it's just a valuable role. And we just saw in that, uh, in that work just the difference it makes with families just supporting them. And so I want to encourage you, if you uh, have got a neighbor or a, a family living near you, just make it your business to, to help them, encourage them, uh, just to speak to them and just perhaps bake a cake for them or do something, just to encourage a mother somewhere who might be going through a difficult time. And, and I know we kind of feel a bit helpless, and, and, and I think a lot of the response to the Ukrainian things is people feeling, I need to do something, I need to do something. And we need to be careful that we're channeling, channeling what we are giving into the right place. I just, I can't, I, I don't want to, to think that we might end up with warehouses full of stuff that hasn't actually served a purpose in, 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 uh, in helping people. Uh, that would be disastrous, wouldn't it? We need to just focus on where things are needed. And for each of us, that might be a different way. But we, we can help in some way or shape or form to help families. So I just want to leave us with that thought that mothers are precious. We all know that. All of you who are mothers know how precious you are. Just reinforce that. And, and how can we help someone else to feel precious and loved and cared for? And at this particular time, how can we be helpful to those mothers who are going through such difficult times with the Ukraine crisis, Ukrainian crisis that's going on now? Let's pray together, shall we? Fathers, we've already prayed and we pray again. We just thank you, Lord, that... Um, you choose uh, to, to make mothers blessed. And we pray, Lord, that you will just bless all mothers today in whatever situations they are, whether they're going through hard times or whether they're going through celebration times as, as children give presents and, and encourage them. And I pray, Lord, that you will just pour your love and your peace and your blessing on families today. And we want to pray particularly for families in our area that might be going through hard times, Lord. Will you lead us to them? Will you show how we can encourage, how we can help, how we can support? And Lord, we again pray for the Ukrainian crisis, Lord, the war that's going on there, for the homes that have been flattened, for the houses that uh, people may end up going back to but will find that they squashed and flattened and destroyed Lord for any rebuilding that's going to be going on in some time in the future Lord for those families who were separated from their, their mothers and family mothers and children who were separated from their husbands 
and loved ones, Father. We just lay them all before you. It seems like a massive ask, Father, but it's nothing that you can't do. You're a way maker. You're a promise keeper. Father, we come to you. We ask that you will move by your power and bring peace in these troubled lands, Lord. Thank you for your love for each one of us. Thank you for our mothers. Thank you for what they've been to us through the years. We seek a blessing in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you, band.